Welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage, where I'm restoring this abandoned 1988 Acura Legend after it sat for 10 years. It's had a lot of issues so far. In previous videos, I've replaced the fuel pump, ECU. It did start after that, but was barely running. So I did plug wires, cap, rotor, fuel filter, fresh oil and filter, still ran like crap. Well now the injectors have arrived, so let's see if these help. These are rebuilt OEM injectors, they are about 80 bucks on eBay. Not bad, I won't have to mess with cleaning the old ones, I'm sure they're nasty. First thing is to get a 12 millimeter wrench and crack this cap loose on top of the fuel filter banjo bolt to relieve the fuel pressure. If the car was running recently, a little gas might spray out of there. When you're working with the fuel system, disconnect the battery to be safe. I'm good there because I don't have one. Next, I want to move any objects out of the way of the fuel rail, such as this breather hose. Vice grips work great on these factory hose clamps. That's not moving. A little twist and it comes right off. Move these plug wires out of the way. There's two 10 millimeter nuts that hold down the wire harness. Both of these need to come off. And there's two more for the harness on the other side. Here's an injector plug. There's a little metal clip that locks the plug onto the injector. I'm using an angled pick tool to get behind the clip and push it out, like that. Once one side pops out, the other side is easy to get. Then the plug pulls right off. Once the plug is off, be sure to put the clip back in place. This plug will go back on with the clip in place, so you might as well put it in place now so it doesn't get lost. Yeah, I lost a clip one time. Now I have all three plugs off of the front injectors and the three off the back. The back clips are hard to reach, so I put a towel on the engine and just lay across it to get closer to the back ones. I can pull the back harness up. The front one runs across the engine, so I'll have to work around it. Next, I need to remove the banjo bolt caps. The fuel comes in on the lower line, goes in the fuel rail, and then leaves here on the top and goes around back here to the rear fuel rail. Move this vacuum line out of the way. 17 millimeter wrench. Crack them both loose first. There we go. I should grab a towel for that fuel leak. There. Now, just loosen the banjo bolt caps. There's the upper and the lower. Be sure not to lose these banjo bolt washers. They're special crush washers. There's one on each side of the fuel rail fitting. I need to remove this 10 millimeter bolt to get this fuel line to come out. I better put these somewhere safe before I knock them down into the engine. Now this line can come off. Put that there. And there's also a 10 millimeter bolt that holds the lower line in place. Now I can slide that one off. Don't get these mixed up. The short one goes on top and the long one goes on the side. I'm putting a little squirt of PB on these fuel rail nuts. They've been on there for 33 years now. While those soak, I'll get this banjo bolt cap with a 17 millimeter socket. Man, there it goes. There's the bolt and we'll bring the washer over on the fuel fitting so I don't drop it with my sausage fingers and spill gas all over the intake. Make sure the bottom washer didn't come with it. It's still over on the fuel rail. You can see here, both of the other bottom washers stayed with the front fuel rail. Don't want to put the fitting back on without these guys in place or I'll have a big fuel leak. Now it's time to unbolt the fuel rail. Crack that one loose. And that one's loose. Still pretty stubborn though. When I get one like this, I loosen, tighten, loosen, tighten. The last thing I want to do is snap off one of these studs. Going back and forth helps to keep that from happening. You know, standard rust belt procedure here in Ohio. Not a bad idea to have a magnet tool around in case you drop one of these fuel rail nuts. With everything out of the way, now it's time to remove the fuel rail. The injectors are all that's holding the rail in place right now. 
it might take a little pull and wiggle to get it loose. There it is. And one injector came out with it. Just pull that guy out. And again, make sure those crush washers don't fall off. So one came out with the rail. Wiggle the next one out here. That one looks gross. And the last one up front. Also gross. You can tell the one on the right here was replaced at some point. And it's an aftermarket injector. There's no writing below that tab. That one's too filthy. You can see here it says Japan. And they both have that logo with the K on it too. That's how to tell the new ones are OEM Honda parts. Notice the lower O-ring. The ones on the old injector stayed in the intake. I'll get those out with some needle nose pliers. Two. And three. Now get the new injectors and press them in place nice and snug. Two. And three. Now on to the fuel rail where the top of the injectors go in. I get a little spit on my finger and wipe it around the inside of the hole. And that helps loop things up a little so the injectors go in easy. Feel to make sure the tops are all lined up with the holes. And slowly press the rail on the injectors. Just don't force it if it's not going. One might not be lined up all the way. Then tighten the rail back down with a 10 millimeter nuts. The other side is pretty much the same, so I'll go over that one real quick. Loosen the rail, pull it up. All three injectors came with it. Get the lower O-rings that stayed in the intake manifold. Put the new injectors in place. Carefully reinstall the fuel rail. And bolt it down in place. Now with the clips in place on the plugs, I can just push the plugs back onto the injectors. The rest is just the opposite order of taking everything apart, so I'll go through that real quick to keep this short. Reattach the wiring harness and the bracket for the lower fuel line going to the front rail. And then the fuel line going from the front to the back fuel rail. Don't forget the washer before putting the cap on the banjo bolt. Same for the other two. Plug in the front injectors and attach the harness. Put any hoses back on and then the plug wires. Last, don't forget to tighten this bleeder bolt down on the fuel filter banjo bolt. With the battery hooked back up, cycle the key a few times to prime the fuel pump and build pressure. Then go take a close look at all the injectors and banjo bolts and make sure there's no fuel leaking. Just to make sure I didn't miss anything completely. Oh, look at this. Looks like I have a small leak at the fuel filter. I'll tighten that a little more. Now with the engine running, check everything one more time. If you can smell any gas, shut it down right away. This legend runs 100% better now with new injectors. Here's a before and after comparison. Now it sounds like a proper Honda. This engine would barely rev before. It sounds so good. Today was a good day in bringing this poor car back from the grave. Now that I know the engine is good, I'm gonna go buy a battery that actually fits and it'll be time to take it out on the road for the first time in 10 years. Then I'll see how the transmission shifts and make sure it's good. Then I'll start the paperwork and research for the Vermont title loophole. While I wait on that, I can get to work on the interior and start getting that sorted out. It's taking a lot of time and some money to save this old legend from scrap, but I think it's going to be smooth sailing from here on out. I'll put a link to the previous videos in the description so you can see how I got to this point. Thanks for watching.